Before we go in and start actually truly customizing a Dynamics 365 implementation, it's important to understand that many of the customizations that you're going to make to the system might be related or tied together in some type of functionality. For example, I might go in and create kind of a new entity inside Dynamics 365 to, to create capture like timesheet entries or something like that. But in order for users to use an enter time, they have to have the appropriate security role access needed to that timesheet entity. And that's really where solutions come into play. These are what are going to allow you to take these different Dynamics 365 components that you're working with and group them together so that if you ever need to transport them from one system to another, you know that all of those different components such as security roles, forms, views, all of those items have been included. And that's really what we want to look at in this module. So in this module, we really want to provide you with just an overall solutions overview to what solutions are in Dynamics 365. We want to talk a little bit about how you build those solutions and include specific components inside those solutions for transportability. We're going to talk a little bit about how you create solutions and associate those with publishers to be able to keep and tie those, those solutions and those components together, as well as working with versioning. We'll talk about some of the different solution types that are available, including managed and unmanaged, and how that's going to have different effects on environments when you import them in. We'll talk a little bit about multiple solutions and how working with multiple solutions things you just have to keep in mind and how they're going to interact with each other from an application standpoint. And then we'll also just talk a little bit about um, how you export and import those solutions from one environment to another so you can truly transport them as you're moving forward. As we mentioned at the top of the module, solutions are really where you're going to go in and create a package to really deploy and maintain Dynamics 365 customizations. The advantage to working with solutions is you can work with very specific sets of selected components instead of everything at once, which is included in the default solution. The nice thing about this is now all of these different items and components that you're working with are actually deployed together as a related entity. And because of that, things are smaller. You have smaller sizes of, of files that you're working with. And again, as I mentioned, you have the capabilities to keep those items together to use for solution management and change management in the future. And so when we talk about a solution, what we're talking about is the different elements inside a Dynamics 365 implementation that are going to store those customizations. And these are going to be things like schema customization. So are you going to add new entities or new fields to the database? Are you going to go in and add new fields, option sets? Really anything that would be included in the application itself. They might be a template that you're using in the application. They might be image files. They might be security rules. They might be connection profiles, uh, email templates. Maybe you have some processes like workflows. And, and dialogues or any type of automation situation that you want to bring in. These are all elements that can be included as part of a solution and are what are considered solution components. And so as we move forward, we'll talk just a little bit about what those different elements look like and how they interact with each other as part of the application. Before we go on and actually start building all of these different customizations, I want to import a solution that actually has the finished product that we're going to build over, over the course of, of the entire duration of the course that we're going to deliver so you can see kind of how this whole solution concept works together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and just go into settings and I'm going to go into solutions and I'll have an option here to import my solution into my environment. So I'm going to click on import. This is going to ask me what solution I want to import. So I'll browse out and you'll notice that this is where those solutions all have kind of the, the name of the solution as well as the zip file. So we'll go ahead and pick the solution that I want to import in. I'll then go ahead and hit next. It's going to say, okay, do you want to go ahead and import this in? It's going to ask me if I want to view all that information. That's fine. This is an unmanaged solution. So everything's just going to pop right into the application. Now I can go ahead and hit next and import and this will import all of these components into my environment. As this process takes place, once this information is imported in, I could then go ahead and publish this information out so then I would be able to see it live in the environment. Now we actually are doing a unmanaged solution depending upon you know who you are, if you're doing an ISV or something like that, you may actually import a managed solution as part of that environment. But for our purposes today, we'll just kind of go ahead and import the actual kind of baseline solution 
for the, for the item that we're working with. And so what this is, is this is just a loan management solution that has some loan application information as well as some additional kind of business rules and functionality built into the application. So now we've kind of imported this in. This tells me that everything went in here. I maybe had a warning that probably is just because of a relationship type or something like that. Nothing to worry about too much. There was no errors, so everything should function just fine. I will go ahead and publish all of these customizations and that will make sure that in this particular environment everything is live and everything is working just like it should be. So once this is done publishing, now I could actually go out and consume this inside the application. Now before we do that, we talked a little bit about solution components and, and how those concepts work. I want to just take you into this solution and show you what the package solution looks like. So if I open up kind of my Malone management solution, I can see in here that it's got all the different entities that would make up whatever it is that we're trying to work with. So this is gonna have things like the account entity and the contact entity because we'll have some lookup fields to those particular entities. We have some connection rules that we're using in different related items to associate people with past employers that they've worked with. This has some field security profiles because we've implemented field security on a couple of different items so the security profiles are brought in there. These will also have our option sets that we're going to use for different drop down arrows within the application itself as well as some custom entities that we've created one around loan applications and then some different um, dashboard functionality that would be used in the application. So now once this information has been kind of brought out and presented now if I come back into here and I go back into my application, I could actually go into sales and I'll see an option here for loan applications. And now I can start working with loan applications. Now we've added some sample data in here just for purposes of, of demonstration. But now if I go ahead and I open one of these individual items up, I can see that I have the form that was created specifically for this individual option. I can see that I can interact with the form based upon the, you know, the items and the, and the scenarios that we're working with. I can actually come into here if I want to and I can look at the, the different type of loan and adjust that based upon different option set values that we've worked with and then I can go through the form and I'll have different iframes and things that will be displayed. So these are all different elements that could ultimately be included as part of a solution and so over the course of the remainder of this is where we will actually build this loan management solution from scratch so you can see how all of this information kind of tied together to give you the finished solution that we're working with here. One of the first things you want to understand about solutions is really the basics. When you create a solution and you package these different components together as part of the solution, you're not necessarily making a copy of those items within the application. What you're doing is you're just creating a link to those or a reference to those within the application. So each solution that you work with when you add, for example, like the contact entity is just creating a reference to that component within the application. So for example, if I have several different solutions that are, that are employed in an environment, they aren't working with their own individual copy of the component each one is still working with that core component within the application. And so what's important to note is as you're building these, if you have other people that have multiple solutions in that environment, those individual solutions will contain all of the customizations that have been made to that particular entity. And we'll talk more about that when we get into some of the exporting capabilities. But the big thing to remember, like I said, is they're, they're references to the entities within the application. They're not necessarily copies of those components. The other thing to remember is that each solution will have a version number associated with it. And these version numbers are really used for updating solutions inside the application. So when you import a solution into an environment, if that solution already exists, it looks at the version number of that solution to determine whether or not it should actually replace it inside the application. So for example, if I have a solution that's in an environment that's maybe solution you know, 1.0.0.0 and I implement solution 2.0.0, it's going to realize that that's a newer version of the solution and it's going to replace it inside the application. But at the same point, if I try to bring in an item with an older version number, then it's going to realize that it's not an updated option and it's not going to replace it. And it uses these version numbers in the format that you would kind of see. So the major, minor, build, and then revision format. And this is automatically populated once you 
pick kind of, you know, the, the first part of the version that you want to work with. And then as part of this, it will actually append the solution name to the solution when you export it out as part of the application. And again, we'll show you a, a specific demo in this here in just a few minutes, and that'll give you a little bit more idea on how this exactly works as part of the application. Every solution that you create has to have what's called a solution publisher. And a solution publisher is, is really a way of determining who made those customizations inside the application. Now every organization when it ships out of the box will have a default publisher for that organization. And what happens is when you add a new field or an entity to the Dynamics 365 implementation, it'll give it a prefix that allows you to denote who made those changes. And so when you create and work with a solution, you have to associate a publisher so it knows kind of what prefix to use as part of that option. The prefix fix is added to all of those different components and like I said it defines really who's making the changes and what those individual options are when you're going through. So if you look kind of on the screen here we can see that we have a, pu a publisher that we've created called AdventureWorks and down at the bottom it has a prefix that's just ADWRKS which defines the prefix that will get added to any customization that this item makes and you can see kind of the preview of the item down at the bottom. A couple of things to remember when you're working with publishers is you can have no more than eight lowercase letters and numbers within a publisher prefix and no matter how you define that publisher prefix it's always going to store it as lowercase level letters. So when you define it you can have no more than eight characters and it will always store it as a lowercase. The other thing to remember with it is each publisher will have a option value prefix. And you can see in this case it says 47,000. This is really when you start creating option sets inside the application. This is what's going to be used for the values associated with those option sets. So again, we can be able to define specifically what those items look like. The thing that's nice about solutions and, and publishers is not only do they allow you to see who made those changes, but things like managed solutions, which we'll talk a little bit about here in a few minutes, they can actually only be updated by solutions that contain the same publisher as who made those initial options. So it also does give you a little bit of protection necessarily when you're working through items to make sure that people who shouldn't be modifying these components aren't necessarily modifying them as part of the application. Every organization will have what's called a default solution. The default solution contains all of the components that are currently in that system or that organization. And when I say all of the components, I mean everything. Any entity that's been added, whether it's been added directly as to that application or whether it's been involved in a solution that's been imported into that application, um, any workflows, any customizations, anything. So it looks at all of the customizations that have been made across all levels and it brings them into the, de the default solution. And so if you ever need to make kind of a generic change, the default solution gives you that mechanism. Now at the same point, we always recommend from a best practice perspective that you always spin up your own solution for the organization just because it does allow you to work with a smaller subset of information. And so when you create your own solution, one of the things that you'll have to kind of define is the solution properties and this is where you're going to define what the name of the solution is or the display name of the solution. You're also going to define the actual schema name for how it's going to be stored within the application itself and then you also need to kind of go in and define um, the version number as well as the publisher. So as we mentioned each component that you bring into that solution once you create it and define the publisher will have the publisher prefix associated with it as part of that implementation when you're working through and as this a, any existing components that you bring in will actually retain their original name when you're going through. And this next slide kind of talks a little bit about it. So through the solution when I create it, I have the ability to either add new or existing components to my solution directly as part of it. If I add a new component, the publisher prefix will be associated with that solution publisher. So it knows that, okay, we created the solution as AdventureWorks. We're now going to create this new component inside the solution. It's now going to have that AdventureWorks prefix. If I have something that that was already added into the application itself, when I add that into the application, it'll retain its original name and will not append that prefix to it. 
The other thing that you want to keep in mind, and you'll see this in the demonstration a little bit, is when you add required components to a solution. When you add those required components, or when you add an item, if there's other required components or dependent items that should also be included, the system will tell you, hey, you, you are missing these components. Process being that if they are not in the new environment that you're working with, the solution will not import correctly. Now the nice thing about this is you can either determine, A, I want to include them as part of the solution, or if you know that you're importing them into an environment that already has them, you can elect not to have them in there. But you do need to understand that if they're not there or not included in the solution, it will fail when it tries to import that information into the environment, if they're, like I said, if they're not already present or included. The other thing that's nice is when you add these individual components, for example, like an entity, when you add an entity to a solution, in the past versions of CRM, you had to kind of include everything. So it would include every form, every view, every chart, everything that was associated with that entity. As part of the new way that solutions work, you can do what are called entity assets. So if you're only going to be adding or working with a specific set of fields or a specific set of forms for that entity, you do have the capabilities to just pick and choose what specific items you want to work with. Now the nice thing about this is if you remember when we talked about that references not copy scenario where we said that you're actually working with the items in the solution, the nice thing about this is now you have the capabilities to really only package the specific things that you need and that way you really are limiting the potential for any conflicts with other solutions that might be working with the same entity because they might only have the five forms that they're working with and you might only have the three forms that you're working with. Now you have less likelihood of having conflicting changes inside those options. The nice thing is if you create these entity assets and you decide later that there's additional ones you want to include, you can always kind of come back and define what those items are. You just have to remember that for every entity that you add to a solution, the entity assets must be defined as part of that solution. And again, we'll show you that inside the demonstration. There are several different types of solutions inside a CRM environment. And let's just talk about some of the, the key ones that you're gonna encounter. The first one, as I mentioned, is the system solution. And the system solution really defines the, the default application behavior. This is a combination of all customizations that have been made to the environment, whether they are coming through unmanaged or managed solutions. It takes everything out of the box functionality and it defines the Apple actual application behavior or what users are going to experience in the application. Another type of solution that you have are what are called unmanaged solutions. Now an unmanaged solution is really just a container for storing customizations within the application itself. When you go in and define a solution inside CRM, every solution that you create is going to be a unmanaged solution. As you go through and start adding individual components and start bringing stuff into those, those items will all be included in that solution when you transfer it from one environment to another environment. So really just think of them as containers. Once I take that solution and I move it into another environment, all of those items that were included in that container will actually be transferred over into the environment. And we'll talk a little bit more about unmanaged solutions here in just a couple seconds. A managed solution is almost like an add-on or an application that you want to install. So if you ever go out to like AppSource and you download some of the applications that are available on AppSource, you know, such as you know, field service, project service automation, those are really just managed solutions. And so what they are is their application functionality that you install on top of a CRM environment. And the biggest difference is you do not have the capabilities to modify managed solutions directly. They're almost like an install of the application. And so what you can do from a customization perspective on those items are actually very limited compared to what you can do from a, an unmanaged perspective. And we'll talk, like I said, more on that here in the next couple of slides as we're moving through. The other option that you have are what are called managed patches. And so at times when you are releasing these, these items and you're pushing these solutions out to individual environments, you might realize that you need to update something or you want to make a change to it. The nice thing about patches is you can actually push out just little updates and fixes into a managed solution 
on maybe specific individual components without actually having to go out and overwrite everything inside the existing solution. But let's, before we talk a lot about that, let's just look at unmanaged solutions first. So again, every 365 implementation that you're gonna do has a default solution that's unmanaged. Unmanaged solutions are modifiable. So when you go in and create a solution, it'll start as an unmanaged solution and you can have multiple unmanaged solutions inside an environment. As I mentioned, when you take that item and you transport it from one Dynamics 365 implementation to another, all of those unmanaged solution components are added. When you, if you were to go into another environment and you were to remove that unmanaged solution, all you're doing is just removing the container. So if I have a unmanaged solution called you know, Derek's solution and I bring it into another environment and it has the contact and the account entity customizations in there, when I remove Derek's solution, all of my customizations to the account entity and the contact entity are still there. If I want to remove those, I would have to manually go in and remove them. So really think of those as a transportation mechanism to take customizations and move them from one environment to another. Whereas with managed solutions, they are really a application. And a managed solution you do not create directly. What you actually do is you create what's called the unmanaged solution first, and then as you're exporting that, it'll ask you if you want to export it as a unmanaged or a managed solution. Once you choose to modify it or to export it as a managed solution, now other people or new people in the new organization will not be able to modify that managed solution directly. They can't go into that solution and make changes. It's a way of kind of protecting people and protecting those changes inside that solution. The other thing is I, have not, I do not have the ability to export a managed solution. So once I take a managed solution and I import it into a new environment, I do not have the ability to export it. Again, think of it almost like an ISV perspective. That way I'm protecting that ISV so if somebody tries to export that solution or to build functionality on top of that solution, they cannot just export it and resell it as their own solution. It would require the original one that was created. The other advantage to, or to manage solutions is because it's acting almost like an application install, when you remove the managed solution, it's also gonna remove everything that was included in there. So when I go in and I say, okay, delete this managed solution, all of the components that were included in that managed solution are also going to be removed from the system. And it really just kind of helps keep everything clean and make it much easier, like I said, to transport stuff based upon very specific needs. Once you have all of the components and all of the items that you want to work with inside your solution, the next logical step is to go ahead and export it. And so when you export a solution, it's going to export the entire solution and all of the components that are in that solution in more of a more or less a compressed zip file format. And when it does that, it actually will go out and it will include the solution name as well as the version number by default. And what it has in there is, is some XML files and some XAML files as well as some DLL files. Anything that would really need to be used as part of that solution are included in from a transportability standpoint. So if you have any you know, image files that you've included, maybe you've created some plugins and you've uploaded those plugins, all of those plugins would be included, workflows, all of those individual situations. And so when you export it, kind of to the point we talked about earlier, if there's components or dependent components that are missing, so for example, if I have a lookup field that looks up a specific entity, if that entity is not included in the solution, we'll get kind of a warning on that. Basically meaning that if I haven't have that included in the in initial environment that we're bringing it into, I am going to actually have failures. The other thing to remember when you're exporting solutions is it's only going to export published customizations. And so when you create these changes and you, and you add fields and items to a solution, you have to publish those to actually push them live out into the application. And if you haven't published those customizations, those customizations will not be included when you actually export the solution itself. Now you can export any type of solution. You can export ones that you've created. You can export the default solution if you want. 
every solution when you export it is going to come out as an unmanaged solution. Um, anytime you do anything, you know, internally making minor changes or those types of things, they will come out as unmanaged. You can determine at that point in time if you want it to be a managed solution, but really think of managed solutions more of, you know, ISV type situations, add-on programs, things where you don't necessarily want people to go in and make a ton of changes inside the application itself. After the solution has been exported, now we can go ahead and import the solution. So when you import the solution into a new environment, a couple of things take place. The first thing that happens is it looks at any components that might already be in the system. And so for example, if you made some changes to the account entity or you made some changes to the contact entity, it'll actually go in and it will just update those components. So it'll look at the changes that you've made and it will add those changes to the environment that you're working with. If you went in and created anything new, maybe you added a new entity for bank accounts or maybe you went in and added a couple new views for an item, all of those new components that you've created and added will automatically be added into the environment that you are importing it into. And then again, it, it comes back to that dependent situation. So remember that if, you know, if I gone in and I create a, a lookup field and it's looking up an entity, that entity, if it's not included in the solution, must already be in that target environment or in the solution. If it's not, it will tell you that it, it, it's going to fail and it will fail because of the missing components. So you would then have to come back into your solution in your original environment, add those missing dependent items, re-export it again. Once you've re-exported it, then you could go ahead and try to import it back into the new environment. And again, depending upon the type of solution that you selected when you exported, if you exported it as either unmanaged or managed, if it's an unmanaged, remember that it's really just the container and it can't be uninstalled. So all of those changes will be written to that default solution for that organization. If I go in and I remove that unmanaged solution, I'm just removing the container. All of the changes that were involved in there, so any entities, any fields, views, all of that stuff will remain. If you want to get rid of it, you would basically have to go in and remove it from the system. Same thing you know, with a managed situation. If I bring a managed component in, that's in essence an application install. So if I remove a managed solution, then all of the components are also removed. So think of one as just kind of a container and think of one as an actual application. Removing one just removes the container, that's unmanaged. Removing the other, managed, removes everything, basically uninstalls it from the entire organization. So let's hop into Dynamics 365 and create a solution and see how that's going to work. So I'm going to go into settings and under settings I'm going to go into solutions and this is going to show me all of the different solutions that I have currently installed into my organization. Right now I don't have any so I'm going to go ahead and create a new solution and we'll just call this sample the next thing that I need is that publisher piece that we talked about. So I'm going to come in here and click on the lookup and this is going to show me that I have the default publisher for my organization. I can hit lookup and this will bring me to all of my additional publishers that I might have. If I want to create a new publisher, I can actually come down in here, click on new and define what I want to call this or how I'm going to work with this. So we're just going to call this uh, demo for our publisher. Down here for my prefix, I'll just use demo as well. And you'll notice that as I walk through the prefix and I make changes, the prefix will automatically default to small letters. And then the option value prefix will come up with kind of a random number so I can associate this specifically with this item. As I come in and I save and close this, now it will look up this particular publisher. I can then add it to the solution. The next option I have in here is the version number. Now again, it likes to default to kind of that major minor situation. So if I come into here, I can just kind of go ahead and pick the version that I want to use, which in this case, we'll just do kind of major and minor. Now in this case, when I save it, it'll save the solution and create kind of the empty container inside the organization that I can work with. Now I'm ready to start bringing in some of the different components. So I can see over here that I have my different entities, option sets, all the different components that might be involved in a customization option from a CRM perspective. As I click on each one of these options, it'll show me if I have any existing ones or items added to the, the, the specific solution as well. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and add an existing component 
And when I click on add existing entity, it's going to then browse out and find all the different entities that are available for me to work with in this implementation. Now, just from a simplistic perspective, I'm going to go ahead and add maybe the account entity and maybe we'll add the contact entity. Then I'll click on OK. And now this is that entity asset thing that we talked about. So what it's going to do is it's going to pop up each one of the entities that I included in this solution, the account entity as well as the contact entity, and it's going to ask me if there's any specific elements that I want to include for this item. So I can see that it's got it broken down by forms, views, charts, all of those individual items. If I wanted to just have you know, the account form, maybe just a couple of specific views that I wanted to work with, this is where I could just kind of check individually which one I wanted to bring in. If I wanted to bring in all of the fields per se, I could come into here and then select all of the fields. Now what you need to really kind of define is, is what are going to be those individual elements. So relationships, messages, hierarchical settings, business rules, anything that might be involved with this particular entity. Depending upon what the situation is, the other option that I could do in here is I could just hit add all assets and this would allow me to add everything for the account entity as part of this particular solution. I could then go ahead and hit next and then it will move on to contact. And it would be the same thing for the contact entity. What specific things do I want to bring in for the contact entity that I intend to be customizing as part of my solution? So in this case, maybe I'll just go ahead again from a time perspective and just add everything. Normally, if you were looking at this from kind of a best practices perspective, you would really only add the individual components or items that you would need to make this particular situation take place. Now in this case, we'll hit finish. It'll then finish adding all of those baseline components into the solution so then I can work with those individual items as I start making my changes. Now, as we work through the remainder of this course, we will then go in and start doing things like adding option sets and creating dashboards and security roles. These are all different components that I could bring in, but this would now give me the capabilities to kind of start moving through that. Once I'm ready to export this solution, I could then come in here to export, click on export solution, and this will walk me through the process of exporting this solution out from one environment to another. So I'd hit on export, it would then ask me what do I want to export. Here is where if I had made any changes that weren't live in the system, this is where I could publish those customizations. So I could hit publish all customizations to make them live in the system. Then I would hit next. The next part of this asks me if there's any system settings that I want to include. And so this would be something that like in the configuration course we discuss a little bit around auto numbering settings, calorie settings, email, those types of things. If you made any modifications to any of those items in the application settings, you could then include those so they were as part of your solution. In this case, we'll just go ahead and hit next. And then this is where it asks me if I want to export this as either a unmanaged or a managed solution as part of the environment. In this case, I'll just go ahead and leave it as unmanaged and we'll hit next. And then it will ask me what target solution or target version that I want to work with. So this is as the builds mature, you can only export and import solutions into an environment that have either the same version number or have a version number greater than where you're at. So in this case, if there was specific functionality that I was going to try to bring into maybe a, a previous version, this is where I could scale it back to either, you know, kind of the 8.0 version, 8.1, 8.2, depending upon those situations. But remember that whatever functionality you've brought in, that's what's going to be included in here and you cannot import a solution into a older version number than what you have defined within this situation. Now when I hit export, it'll go out and it'll export the solution. It'll then ask me what I want to call it and where I want to put it. So this is really just the zip file that's going to be created as part of this solution. Once the zip file uh, is created, I can store it out on my desktop and then or, or wherever I want to store it and then I could import it into the new environment based upon those options. So eventually I'll get an option that says where do you want to save it. I can define where I want to save it. So I go into save as. You'll see that it has my sample name along with the version number. In this case, I'll just put it out onto my desktop for now. And then I can go ahead and save it 
which would then allow me to re-import it into another organization at some other point if I wanted to. Now, we talked a little bit about you know, making updates and, and different things. So one of the things that's kind of cool with these solutions is, is maybe I export this out as a managed solution and I want to go out and maybe add just a, a, a specific entity or I want to create a, a different piece of functionality and I want to include it in the solution but I don't want to have to push the entire solution out. One of the options that you'll see in here is what's called clone a patch. And so what's nice about this clone a patch is I could actually create a patch for this solution that contains just maybe you know, one additional view or, or maybe a different entity that I want to include in so I can push that out and still kind of make it part of this individual situation. Now this is a little bit more around kind of the advanced scenarios, but I at least want to show it because it's kind of a neat feature. So I've got sample selected here. I can hit clone a patch and so what this does is this actually tells me here's the name of the solution here's how I'm going to update that version number so this is why that 1.0.0.0 version numbering option was kind of a big deal is because this will auto increment that information as you're moving forward now I can go ahead and hit save and what it does is it creates a patch based upon this information and it shows me the version number that's attached to it. Now in this case, when I open up this solution, you'll notice that there's nothing in here. So the big thing to remember when you clone a patch, if you wanna add maybe an additional functionality or something like that, it's not going to go in and make copy of the entire solution. What it's going to do is it's gonna create a new container with that version number. So if there's a specific component or subset of items you want to bring in you can pick those so in this case maybe there's just an option set that I want to bring into this environment I can go in to add existing I can pick the option set that I want to work with in this case maybe we'll just say budget click on OK and then I can save and close this and now I could export just this patch and now import it into another environment and it would just add this patch on top of that level of functionality without having to create kind of a brand new version number for the entire situation. Now the other thing that's nice is, is once you've maybe done five or six of these patches and you realize okay we've got enough updates and things in here that it really constitutes maybe kind of an updated version of the solution. The other thing that I can do now is I can hit clone solution. And what Clone Solution does is create kind of a minor version number of this entire solution. So now I can see that I have 1.1.0.0. I hit Save. It basically clones this to a solution, creates kind of an updated version of that solution that really includes all of the patches and all of the individual elements. And so now if I were to go ahead and open up this solution, now you can see that not only do I have both entities, but I also have that option set in here. Again, this is something as you get a little bit more advanced into what you're doing from a deployment mechanism that you will experiment with, but this is a great way that if you have just minor changes that you wanna make, you can go in, clone to a patch, add those just subsets of smaller components, push it out, it'll add that as a patch to the environment, and once you have enough of those that would constitute a new solution, this is where you could now go in and, and, and truly clone to a solution and then make one kind of all-encompassing situation. So as you're getting ready to make these customizations and target these customizations into your environment, it's important to determine how you want to group and define those items together. And that's really where solutions come into play. Because by creating those individual situations and grouping all of those different changes and components and elements together into one package, it's much easier for you to transport that information from one environment to another. And also, as we've mentioned several times, makes it easier for you to keep that solution available for manageability capabilities. And so from an application standpoint, kind of what we talked about was just the concept around what solutions are used for. And ultimately, again, they're just used to create and package and deploy those customizations for one situation. The big thing to remember is as you're building these solutions and you're defining what elements are going to be in these solutions, if I could add an entity into that solution, I'm adding a link back to that entity in the actual deployment. Each solution that you create does 
does not have individual copies of those components. It's a reference back. So if you have multiple solutions that are working with the same entity, each one of those changes and those items that you're working with will be also export it out as part of your solution when you work through it. And that's where that concept of using entity assets and subcomponents can come into play because now you can make sure that when you're exporting stuff, you're only exporting the items that are necessarily specific to what it is that you're trying to do and you can minimize the impact of other potential customizations as you're moving forward. The other thing to remember is there's two types of solutions. There's unmanaged solutions and there's managed solutions. Every solution that you create will start off as unmanaged. It doesn't actually become a managed solution until you export it and then specifically define it as a managed solution during that export process. If you don't define it as a managed solution, it will then always be an unmanaged solution in the environment. Once that solution has been exported, then you can import it into your new environment. But the big thing to remember is when you import it in, if there's any dependency, so if there's any required components that are either A, not in the solution, or B, not already in the target environment that you're working with, the solution will fail. So the system does typically remind you of that ahead of time, but again, you just wanna make sure that if you know they're already in the environment that you're working with, you can elect not to include them, but if you're not sure, then you probably wanna include them into the environment just to avoid any potential of things failing. Really.